Okay. Uh, what I find is that people will raise some objections often, not often, but occasionally, uh, depending on what the audience is and their orientation about gratitude. Is gratitude always a good thing? Or what about this? Or, you know, um, find some, some skeptical uh, conclusions to draw about the nature of gratitude. And three of the objections take this form, that gratitude is just another form of positive thinking. Writing about blessings, good things, and what about all the negative, and about suffering and so forth, the reality of the negative. Well, for it's not another form of positive thinking. In fact, gratitude can be very difficult because in, in gratitude, you recognize your dependence upon others. That's not always positive. You have to humble yourself in the sense that you have to become a good receiver. Most people are better givers than they are receivers. Gratitude also implies a sense of obligation or indebtedness. If I am grateful for something you provided for me, I have to take care of that thing. I have to perhaps reciprocate at some appropriate time in some appropriate manner. So that's a, that's a type of indebtedness or obligation, which can be perceived very negatively. So it's not just positive, nice, warm, fuzzy feeling, but has responsibilities that go along with it, which can make it uh, difficult or challenging for people under certain circumstances. Another objection people raise is that, well, if you're grateful, you're going to stop trying to do things. You're going to be less effortful. You'll become more passive, more complacent with the status quo. You give up trying. I'm grateful for whatever I have. I'm grateful no matter how much they cut my salary at the university. You know, I have a job, uh, which actually is true. I'm, I am grateful I have a job, but at, at some point I probably would become less grateful I cut too much, you know, the salary and gave us too many days off uh, and so on. But that, that's, that's the thinking, that gratitude implies a sense of not trying or passivity. It leads to a decrement in performance. Well, we find that's not the case at all because we've done a couple of studies where we, we found that people actually are more successful at attaining their goals if they are also keeping a gratitude journal at the time. We asked people to identify goals they're going to work on, six personal goals over the next two months, academic, interpersonal, spiritual, health-related. We found if they were in the gratitude group, again, folks on this side of the room, they actually were, were working harder, exerting more effort toward those goals, not surprisingly because they were feeling more energetic, more alive, alert, awake, and so on. But they were not any more satisfied with the progress they were making, which was a separate question. We asked several questions regarding the nature of their goal pursuits, importance, progress, satisfaction, and so on. So yeah, they were making progress, but they weren't going to stop there. I've got to make more progress. Right? So they're not becoming complacent or satisfied to the degree of not trying anymore compared to those in the other condition. So myth number two can also be shown to be false. Oh, sure, there's cases and you can point out uh, exceptions and so on as always you can. But I think in general, gratitude leads to action. Gratitude is a motivating emotion and trait. It doesn't lead to inactivity. In fact, it leads to more vigorous pursuit of activity. And number three, some would say it's impossible to be grateful in the midst of suffering. When life is going well, when there's abundance, we can be grateful. But what about suffering? Well, all we need to do is look at the legions of people throughout history. Whether you look at philosophical writings, religious writings, look at contemporary life, people have been through difficult, tragic life circumstances, but come out of it with a deeper sense of appreciation for life, gratefulness, which was then emerges out of this period of deprivation, suffering. So, again, I think it's, it's another myth that can be easily... Uh, busted about gratitude. I mentioned gratitude is very interesting to me because it's, it's not necessarily obvious or simplistic, but there's levels, nuances, and depth to it. And one of the uh, illustrations of this is that gratitude can be very counterintuitive in the sense it can go against our intuitions uh, in at least three different ways. You know, psychologists talk about these three things, about the self-serving bias you know what that is, right? We take credit for success that happens to us. When good things happen, we say it's because we did it, because of our own ability, effort, uh, and so on. But when, when we fail, when we're not successful, we blame other people or situations, circumstances, right? Well, gratitude really goes against the self-serving bias because when we're grateful, we give credit to other people for our success. Maybe ourselves, yes, but we widen our range of attribution to say, well, my parents gave me this opportunity. I had teachers. I had mentors. I had siblings, peers. Other people assisted me along the way. I stop now to acknowledge and reflect upon their contributions. That's very different from a self-serving bias. The need for control, the need to make things happen, the need to feel in control of our environment and our situation all the time, very strong need, personal control. 
that people have. Sometimes in, with gratitude, you just have to accept uh, life as it is. When situations are uncontrollable, there's a, a surrender that takes place that can, again, set the stage for the experience of gratitude. And then contradicting the just world hypothesis, just world hypothesis, we get what we deserve in life. Good people, good things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people. It doesn't always work out that way, does it? Bad things happen to good people and vice versa. People don't always get what they deserve. With gratitude comes the realization, we get more than we deserve, right? And I've, I've, I've talked to groups of people, and I'll never forget, there was a man who raised his hand a question in the front row, and says, he says, it's a good thing we don't get what we deserve, you know? <laughs> and he says, you know, I'm grateful. I get, I get far more, he says, than I deserve. Far more goodness is what he's saying. Uh, in his life. And so, again, that contradicts the notion of this just world hypothesis. So, it goes against our intuitions in a lot of different ways. So, gratitude is good, but it's not easy. Okay? And if we just focus on the goodness of it, we're missing half the picture. We've got to focus also on the obstacles, the roadblocks. People say it's good, they make good associations to it, but yet, is everybody practicing gratitude? Do the people you work with or you live with are they always talking about what they're grateful for or something else? You know, are they in this group versus, you know, the, the gratitude group? Well, there's very real obstacles to gratitude that have to be identified. And if you're in the field of counseling or do clinical work, you know that. You can't just always build up a virtue without first diminishing a vice, right? And separate mechanisms, separate processes may be necessary to, to diminish a vice before you can amplify a virtue. And part of the reason why it's maybe difficult to experience gratitude is because some of these vices or these uh, incompatible behaviors occur more easily or naturally or habitually to individuals. Pervasive negativity, uh, the, the, the uh, uncanny ability that we have to lapse into complaint, to dissatisfaction, to focus on deprivation, whether we notice it or not, it, it's all around us. Sense of entitlement. We deserve, we earn it. We, we, you know, we deserve this and so on. It's a message that we get told all the time from uh, in contemporary culture. And so that works against if you deserve everything, if you're entitled to everything, can you be grateful for anything? I don't think so. It certainly makes it a lot harder. And then there is, in fact, I think occasions when suffering does make it very difficult to grow gratitude. There are people who have been through terrible life circumstances find it hard to generate gratitude for anything or for anyone. It's certainly at the time of suffering. Maybe down the road they can step back, but during the time it can be very difficult and can be a substantial obstacle.